We've said goodbye to so many guys that brought talent and experience to the defense. Spring ball is still months away, but old and new alike will be vying for those freshly vacant starting positions. Who will fall short and who will step up to claim their spot as a black shirt? Hi, I'm Aaron Muller, and this is episode 31 of the Cops Mac podcast. This is a Nebraska football podcast covering the Husker season and team news as it progresses throughout the year. This is part two of a three-part deep dive into the different position groups uh, that could struggle this Uh, offseason to improve and who might actually take a step forward we covered special teams in the previous episode so if you haven't watched that already go back and watch that otherwise it is on to the defense so with so much talent leaving the defensive side of things many people are worried about how we're going to reload going into the 22 season there's a mass exodus of guys with substantial game time under their belts Five of the top 10 tacklers are gone. You look at the list, you have safety Markel Dismuke, safety Deontay Williams, cornerback Cam Taylor-Britt, outside linebacker Jojo Doman, inside linebacker Will Honus, defensive lineman Ben Stilley, Damian Daniels, and DeAndre Thomas all gone. So this isn't even mentioning the few guys that are transferring out that would have added depth to the room um, that are transferring out to go elsewhere. That's a lot of experience, not to mention leadership that is leaving. You have... Cam Taylor, Britt, Ben Stilley, Damian Daniels, those guys are leaders. But you have Jojo Doman, which is the heartbeat of arguably the entire team. He gave a lot of those locker room speeches towards the end of the season when we needed wins. Weren't able to pull him out, but he was there. He was fighting every single game until he wasn't able to fight anymore. So um, you're losing a lot of leadership on top of just the physical bodies that these guys brought to the table. So uh, there's a lot that you're going to have to reload, and I'm I'm a little worried a lot like other people that we might not be able to fill each role as successfully as the guy that was there previously. But I believe that Eric Chenander and the coaching staff has done enough in the past few seasons to show us that they can consistently put out good defenses. Uh, Coupled with all the portal players coming in, I think that they could at least patch things up at the very least. Um, But I think other positions have a chance to step forward this season as well. So we're going to start with looking at the defensive line. We're losing a lot of talent here with Ben Stilley gone, uh, but especially Damian Daniels. I think that the nose tackle position is going to be sorely missed there. He was a big body, but he was also good at what he did. He was able to eat a lot of double teams, but get off of those, get shed the double teams and get to the backfield. He was able to be disruptive and he was a monster at that. Um, Nick Bach, on his podcast, they called him snacks all the time. And he was a big guy and he just, he liked to be disruptive and the linebackers appreciated him for that. So you have guys like Nash Hutmacher, Casey Rogers and Ty Robinson that have all shown potential that could possibly take that position. Specifically Robinson will need to step up and fill those shoes. I think he has the most experience the most snaps under his belt, but both he and polar bear Hutmacher have a similar size to Daniels. That doesn't mean that they'll be able to fill that as well as he was. As I mentioned, there's other intangibles besides just that physical body that they're bringing to the table that they 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 need to fill in for uh daniels was also a leader the defensive line much like the offensive line will depending be depending on a lot of younger guys to step in and those guys could have the exact same you know height and weight stats but they're going to be missing a lot of that experience a lot of that leadership capability uh as i mentioned daniels gets a lot of credit from the linebacking core because Luke Reimers mentioned multiple times that that guy's a beast. He eats a lot of double teams so that we can get the tackles. So um, you have guys that are going to have to come in and maybe learn those first few games how to fill in for these guys that are gone, but they have some experience, so it's not going to be completely new to them, completely fresh. The defensive line, though, could go either way. It could sustain where it was last season, could drop off a little bit. I don't see it probably improving upon last season. But uh, if it can hold, you know, hold a standard to where it was last season and not not drop too far below that, I think that we'll be fine there. It's just if we put some guys in that just aren't able to be disruptive, aren't able to hold offensive lines or or get to the backfield or allow your linebackers to make plays, uh, that's where it can kind of start being an issue. So the defensive line, I don't think that they will be improving next season, but I hope that they will be able to hold where they have been. Now we're going to look at the linebackers. So I don't think that you will be seeing much movement with the inside linebacker position. You have Luke Reimers and Nick Henrich are both returning to their roles this season. They put up solid performances last year. Uh, They actually ranked sixth and seventh respectively in the big 10 in total tackles. Um, 
they did struggle with a lot of the run defenses. They were either not stopping the guy right at the line of scrimmage or they were just completely missing their their block assignments So, or, or their run fit assignments. So they weren't hitting the slots that they were supposed to and they are just letting guys run right past them or they weren't able to make the tackles where they needed to. Um, if they can iron those out, I think that these two guys will be a very dynamic duo for the, the Huskers in the middle of the field there. They could even be elite. I think that they could be up there with the Iowa inside linebackers that they have. Um, the Luke Rummer specifically, Bear, uh, Coach Rude keeps saying that that he is surprised with Luke Rummer's and his football, just his football feel, his football sense is really, really good. And I mean, I, I if he has a really good year this year, I can imagine he probably even going pro. Nick Henrich is not too far behind that. He's he's still learning the ropes as much as Luke Reimers was, but I think that both of those guys together, they played really well last season. I can't imagine that they drop, you know, low after having another year of experience under their belt. The position itself will only be getting stronger as well with incoming freshman Ernest Hausman. Um, as I mentioned, Luke Reimers gets a lot of talk about his football sense. There's a lot of talk about Ernest Hausman coming in as well. He has the ability at poten- uh, at linebacker and has the potential to be good at that position as well. I don't know that he will be getting a starting spot, but he might see you know his name in there in the mix a little bit. Um, plus, he's coming out of Columbus, which is where I'm from, so you got to rep it. Looking at the outside linebackers, though, uh, you'll have a few seniors returning as well. So Fildarius Payne, who had originally entered his name in the transfer portal and then came back, I think maybe he saw that he was going to have a bigger role this season. He ended up coming back. You have Caleb Tanner and Damian Jackson all come back. They all three have experience. They all three should be able to help the outside linebackers, you know, maintain some kind of continu- con- continuity. <laughs> continuity um as i mentioned i've recorded this once already and it was too long so i split it up into the three parts um but one of my favorite black shirts is also returning at the outside linebacker position garrett nelson and he is set up to have a huge year this year he actually had a higher pass rush grade than jojo doman as i mentioned in that season though uh season recap that his size favors that more anyway. Jojo made comments about that too in his podcast with Sean Callahan. He says that I am the nickelback. I am the hybrid player, but Garrett Nelson is more of a true outside linebacker in the sense that he is built his physicality. His body is built to murder quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, that's just, he's like, I am, I am here for some packages, these nickel packages, Garrett Nelson's here to murder the quarterback. So, um, he could finally emerge as a high level edge rusher, I think. So if you look at the linebackers as a whole, you have the inside linebackers, which I believe are going to take a step forward with Reimers and Henrich, both returning and already having good seasons last season, the outside linebackers, uh, they are losing Jojo Doman. But as I mentioned, he played more of a nickel position, which we're going to touch on that. I actually made a separate position group for the nickel group, which is solely Jojo Doman. But, um, I think the outside linebackers will also find success this season. Maybe not up to the standard that they had while Jojo was there because he is such a big loss for them, but I think that they'll be able to maintain. And if Garrett Nelson is able to take that step forward, then if we can get a pass rush going this season, that just sets the whole defense, you know, up a notch. So I think that the linebacker core as a whole is going to take a step forward as well. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to step into the nickel position. So I had to throw this in there because Jojo was so good at what he did that i mean he was arguably the best player on the defense while he was officially listed at the outside linebacker position on the roster that might be slightly misleading because most of the time he did play that nickel he played that hybrid position with multiple responsibilities as the fifth back i.e the nickel back uh his job changed every down depending on the offensive scheme sometimes he does play more of that traditional outside linebacker role where he is in charge of edge rush or containing or blitzing from the outside but as the fifth back he's also tasked with dropping back and covering the extra receiver or the running back that's running a wheel route he's you know he's constantly changing his responsibilities and so in order to do that he needs to be able to read offenses and he needs to have a good football iq to go with that I'm not sure that they're going to be able to find a one-for-one replacement for Doman because he was so good at what he did. You could even argue that the Huskers ran more nickel packages because he was so good at it that, you know, keep him out there. Um, Does this mean that we revert back to more of a traditional 3-4 scheme? I don't think so. Uh, As we've seen when, when Luke 
uh, Isaac Gifford came in for Doman when Doman went out with a hand injury. Isaac Gifford came in and he played admirable. He he didn't play up to the level that Jojo Doman did, but Isaac Gifford came in and he played well. There was no like real drop off there. He didn't really like cost us any big plays because he was out there and Jojo wasn't. Uh, Doman even put, praised his play during the podcast that I mentioned. He had sh- with Sean Callahan. Ca- ugh, Sean Callahan. He even praised kind of Isaac Gifford's effort in the play. Uh, you do hear names also like Javin Wright that that seem like they could fit that mold as well. I think that Isaac Gifford is probably going to get that starting spot if they have that nickel package rolled up. But Javin Wright could also make a run at it too. He's 6'4 and 220 pounds, and he does have that dynamic play mac- playmaker potential. He he has the speed, he has the power, and he I don't know that he has the football knowledge. I haven't seen a ton on him on that. But if he has that, then he's kind of built for that position as well. So you have a couple guys that could probably fill in for that, but obviously they're not going to get up to the Doman level. Doman, I mean, they called it the Doman nickel. Like he, he kind of made that position for the black shirts, and that was, that's why he's going to be in the NFL somewhere. So um, I don't think that they're going to take a step forward at nickel. I don't know that they will even be able to maintain the level that he had while there, but. At the very least, they might take a slight step back, but it shouldn't be a, a big drop off as Isaac Gifford has seen playing time in that role already. We are going to switch over to the secondary now. So I think this is the hardest hit secondary or hardest hit position group on the entire team. They're losing three of the four starting players. They had Markel Dismuke, Deontay Williams, and Cam Taylor Britt. Fortunately, we have some experience at defensive back returning. You have Miles Farmer, who started the final four games at safety after Williams went out with an injury. You have Quentin Newsom, who played corner across from Cam. He was the young guy. He got tested a lot last season. Guys, teams were throwing at him to see if he was capable of playing corner in the Big Ten. And more often than not, he held his own. He did give up some big plays. He did miss some coverage a few times. But for the most part, he held his own. More often than not, he was able to do his job. However, we also have seven new defensive backs entering the fray. You have four transfers with Omar Brown, Javier Morton, Deshaun Singleton, and Tommy Hill. And you also have three incoming freshmen with Jaden Gould, Jaleel Martin, and Malcolm Hartsog. I fully expect that Newsom will retain the starting spot after the solid performance he put up last season. But who fills in for Cam on the other side? Omar Brown is a transfer who wouldn't surprise me if he if he just earned that spot outright. He was the 2019 FCS Freshman of the Year. He's 6'1", 200, pound, 200 pounds, and his frame seems to fit that role perfectly. He He's shown the experience. He's able to do that as well. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if Omar Brown just outright takes that job. Tommy Hill might be my favorite, though, to earn a job somewhere on the defense. I'm going to preface that a little bit. He's six foot 205 and he has speed to match. He seems like he also has a really good football IQ. So if he doesn't earn a job at defensive back, which seems like that's where he wants to be, I I could easily see him challenging for that nickel position. Um, He has the frame. He has the football knowledge. He has the ability to play that fifth back position. So it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't, you know, go over and push into that nickel category as well. So uh, cornerbacks, I I don't think that we have anybody that has shown themselves to be Cam Taylor Britt's ceiling. Cam struggled last season to reach his potential like he 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 has the potential to be great. And I'm sure we'll see that once he gets the NFL. Newsom obviously he has a year under his belt, he'll be improving as well. I don't think we take a drop there's no drop off at cornerback next year. So the cornerback position will probably more more than likely improve next season as far as the safety spots go i believe that miles farmer played well enough last season to probably retain his spot that he earned he will have to improve on his tackling a little bit and his overall coverage as well he was out of position on a few plays that turned into big touchdown plays as well so miles farmer he needs to improve but i think he he's probably already done that he's probably already addressed those things and he will be earning that spot at safety Across from him, though, Deshaun Singleton is a six foot three, two hundred and five pound monster who looks every bit the part. I think that coming in with experience at that transfer position, he's the biggest of the transfers that came in. Um, I think that he's probably a favorite to earn that other safety spot, and he looks like he's every bit of capable of doing it. He he looks like he's 
quick enough to come up and help the run defense uh and he will run a beeline and rip your head off as well so um he kind of reminds me of Deontay Williams where Deontay Williams was a big hitter I think Deshaun Singleton is is every bit of that uh but like I mentioned many positions are going to have an intense competition this spring and I, I think that's a good thing um the secondary might be the most brutal though I think that that all of these starting spots, as I mentioned, there's 16 scholarship defensive backs on the roster, and there's only four starting spots. So I think that you're going to have a competition because all of these guys want one of those starting spots, or they want significant play time at the very least. And they didn't transfer in here. They didn't come here. They didn't get recruited here to sit on the bench. So it's going to be an intense competition. Defensive backs seem to always kind of be really intense anyway, so... Um, I'm sure that this is going to bring attrition. I think that it's once guys kind of get a feel for the uh, depth chart going through the spring, if they feel like they're slipping, if they feel like they're not going to get the play time they feel they deserve, they're going to be out the door. I mentioned that the competition is good. I think it's good. And it's only really good for those people that can overcome it. And others will fold and those people will be out the door. It's kind of trimming the fat off the program. So uh, for those guys, though, that are able to, you know, kind of go through the fire and harden themselves, then they will be even better because of that competition. And that's what you want to come out of this program. That's what we kind of been lacking. We haven't really had a ton of talent together in one place to be able to push these guys further and further and further. You're not going to just fold sometimes. When you're a competitive guy, you want to be better than the guy next to you. So you're either going to improve your game to get better and earn a starting spot, or you're just going to be like, I don't want to work for it. And in that case, we don't really need you here. So um, I wouldn't be surprised as well. If we have some guys, as I mentioned, there's 16 guys on that roster and I didn't mention every one of them. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some guys that have been working their ass off this off season and they reach up and grab one of those starting roles for themselves. Uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if we lose a lot of guys because they just, they don't get the starting spot. We think, or they think they deserve, but um, there you have it though. That's going to be the defensive breakdown and how it might look going into next season. Uh, are you worried about any group in particular on the defense? I mentioned that the defensive line might not improve. The linebackers will improve. We're losing Jojo Doman. Uh, the secondary looks like it might actually be better than it was last season. Um, but leave a comment below on whatever you think. Be sure to catch the next video, though. We're going to do the part three where we cover the offense, and there's going to be a heavy, heavy dose of offensive line talk in that one. So until that one, I will see you. Go big. Go big.